I'm feeling super unfaithy today and I feel gross and I feel disconnected and it sucks. Jesus is my rock and that's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. If you want that Jesus vibe, you guys, you just gotta subscribe. Push that little subscribe button down there and push that little alert bell and you will get an alert every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. If you would like to bless this Holy Spirit activated ministry, you can go to the top of the comments and see my Patreon link. And it's also in the description. I'm wearing my house coat. <laughs> no, seriously, this is like a house coat, like a 60s house coat. And she got the slippers to go with the coat. Look who's with me. Come on, Pokazaki. Say hello to the Bible babes. Oh, is that nasty dog there? Is that the, she told me she would text me when that dog was back in town. This dog is not nice to Pokey at all. Pokey's like, oh, hella no, out of here. She heard that dog barking. She turned around in the other direction. I was reading an article today about self-esteem and it was talking all about how important it is to accept ourselves for who we are today. And you know, I had a little trouble with it. I just really feel like that's dangerous. I really feel that if people become too complacent and too accepting of their circumstances or their situation, how is anyone ever supposed to grow or evolve or challenge themselves? I guess I'm worried that if I adopted that mentality that I would kind of give up on life. I would sort of give up on growing and that's terrifying to me. I enjoy challenging myself. We talk about vision boards and stuff like that, and I don't know if that's new agey or what, but I've never done one personally. I definitely like to do the envisioning of things and trying to seeing myself feeling inspired, learning more, feeling empowered, seeing myself super connected to the Lord, seeing myself praying and reading scripture and helping other people along on the journey. And uh, all of that is very inspiring to me. I feel like if I were just to become complacent and be like, oh, China, I love you the way you are today. No, it's more like stand back. You ain't seen nothing yet. You know what I mean? That's, I like coming from that perspective and from that attitude. It keeps me young and it keeps me moving. I don't wanna become stagnant. May as well just roll over and die, you know? I absolutely love the quote, the way to never get old is to never let the old lady in. Just don't let her in. When she knocks, don't let her in. I like that. That's sound advice right there. There's just too many minefields in life. If I just, you know, stop moving, it's like, I'm just gonna blow up, I know it. I gotta keep hopping over the minefields. I don't have any time to waste or any time to lose just sitting around saying, I love you, China. I love you the way you are. Never change. Sorry, Billy Joel, but this woman is gonna change. I think the most important thing to never do is to go backwards. Stagnant, that's bad enough, but backwards? Oh, honey, backwards is a bad idea. Everybody's heard that quote, don't go fishing for something that's already been tossed in the sea. Something that we've already shed, something that Jesus has already healed us from. Going back into the ocean to try and pull it out and live from that place again. Really bad idea. And trust, I have definitely been guilty of that. I've dived into that ocean and grabbed the most toxic, the most unsavory part of myself. That's where the old adage, I know this pain, came from. Truth from that exact behavior, mistake. I truly believe no matter what, if you're a Christian, that Jesus is busy rewriting our story because you know the Holy Spirit is indwelling inside of us and the Holy Spirit is basically creativity. The Holy Spirit is peace, is love. I've been having some fear and panic uh, lately about, about death and just about time running out. I hate that feeling when I feel like time is running out. I wanna do all the things that I wanna do and live the life that I want to live before I die. And um, I just sort of forget, I forget that there's two days where we can't do anything. The first one is yesterday and the second one is tomorrow. Like literally those are the two days that we can do nothing about. So I have to stay in this moment. I have to stay in today and I'm allowed to, to dream. I'm allowed to pray. You can do your dream board, but <laughs> staying in this moment right now, that's living. It's actually sliving. 
Isn't that what Paris Hilton calls slaying and living, sliving? Come on, my little bean drop, come on. I really believe that our smartphones are making it harder and harder for us to stay in this moment because we're just getting so much information so quickly and we just jump from one platform to the next. YouTube, to email, to the phone, to the text, it's a lot. It prevents me from being in the moment or even noticing that I'm not in the moment. So I really want to try and work on putting my phone down as it's in front of my face and I am talking to you. I feel like my love lenses are cracked when I have my face in the phone too much on any particular day. I am just a little more curt, I'm a little less thoughtful, more out of my body, so it makes perfect sense that I would be a little more unconscious. Hey, I always forget your name. What's your name again? Rude. Pokey's in love with an older man. She comes over here several times a day to give that boy a kiss. I can't afford that type of negligence in my life and yet I'm allowing it in. I mean, it's all on me. It's really sad and it's pathetic. And I know I'm not the only person who struggles with how much attention they give to their phone. The scariest part is that we may miss an opportunity to minister to somebody. I mean, you may be the only Bible anyone ever reads. And if our, f our face is in our phone like this all day long, we're missing an opportunity somebody to say hi to somebody, for somebody to maybe ask you a question or start a conversation with you. Nobody's gonna start a conversation with you if you've got your face in your phone, that's for sure. My plants are in full bloom. Look at how gorgeous that is. Ah! And take a look at these. Oh, mama. Are they called trumpets, you guys? <laughs> or is that a dessert? No, that's a crumpet. Hendrix is like, yes, you may take my portrait. Oh, you're so handsome. Sexiest cat alive. Are you kidding me right now? Okay. You got a friend, mama. You know, sometimes I consciously think to myself, like, yeah, Jesus is on call. He's there. He's available. I'm just not servicing him. And uh, that's just the truth. Like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I know you're there, but like, I'm just not going to talk to you right now. I'm just going to be in my head. I'm going to go on my phone. I'm going to, I'm going to mope. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to have a little bit of a pity party. And you know, sometimes you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. Sometimes I just refuse to make the omelet. I just look at the eggs. I won't break them. I'm feeling super unfaithy today. And that's got to be okay sometimes, right? I mean, it's part of the journey. It's part of the walk. And, and I feel gross and I feel disconnected and I feel untethered. I think the trick for me today is just to get back to the basics, you know? Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? The whole halt thing that they talk about in AA. I think they'd say that in Al-Anon too, but I remember them saying that in AA and I was like, oh, that's so good. Because usually if I'm agitated or depressed or sad or feeling hangry, usually. <laughs> Touching on the whole self-esteem topic again, I feel like the worth I must have, you know, to God. And that's what I need to base my self-worth on is like, what's my worth in God's eyes, right? And obviously that's immeasurable and priceless and all of that. If I could see myself the way God sees myself, I think that I would be kinder to myself and I think that I would be more patient with myself and I think that I would have higher standards of people and the way they treat me. My background keeps changing because I'm following the light. The Bible says that we were not bought with silver and gold, but that we were bought by the Son of God, which is priceless, imperishable worth. So if I truly owned that, if I truly believed that and adopted that mentality, how much more would I love myself? How much more worth would I think I had, I wonder? If I really drove that home and believed that in my inner being, that I was bought and purchased and adopted by the Son of God, imperishable, priceless worth. I think things would be a little different in my life. Wilson Phillips actually had a, uh, a song on the first debut album called Ooh, Your Gold. All I really need you to know is ooh, your gold. It was good. It wasn't my favorite song on the album, but it, it was good, it was solid. I do feel for my guardian angel. I do, it's a very, very big job, but I 
you know, somebody's got to do it. I'm really hoping I can simplify my life. I feel like I'm moving in that direction, people. I really do. It's definitely a goal that I have to simplify my life. And I will, every day, making chipping away at making my life a little more simple. Chaos and anxiety are, are, are both bad seeds. Very, very bad seeds that need to die. I, I need to crush those seeds. And a seed that dies multiplies, you guys. So I'm looking forward to that. I have to trust that if I keep praying about God helping me get rid of my chaos and my anxiety and all of that crud, that he will in his time. It's about just having faith in that. But I do know one thing for sure that I can do today, and that's to make today a love letter to God. I can do that. You can do that. Make today a love letter to God, guys. One thing you're not going to want to miss is California healing, you guys. I know that you're going to get so much out of it. I'm going to get so much out of it. I can't wait for it to get started. So make sure you stay subscribed and that you've pushed that little bell so that you can get an alert every single time there's a new Cal Preach and you will not miss the sign up. And we are all just going to walk each other home. Yes. Peace. Hi, my sweet Bible babes. This is the China and Vaughn CD. This CD is Holy Spirit activated. It was completely downloaded from heaven. I will sign it for you and you can get it at CaliforniaPreaching.com. Don't miss out. All right, let's go. Hey friends, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and that you will press that little bell because that little bell will give you an alert every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And remember, sharing is caring. You never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ.